a in, uh, a into a so when the positive integer is divided by b so every time when we are simplifying the remainder also like and here we took b minus 1 because Good morning everyone, I am Devarun Das of class 8 studying in DAV model school. So here I am with the proof of Fermat's little theorem. So it says as any two co-prime numbers a comma p where p is a prime satisfy the condition a to the power p minus 1 congruent to 1 mod p. Now we will move on to the proof. GCD of a comma p equals to 1 because these are co-prime numbers. So let a congruent to x mod p. So p when divides a we will get a remainder of x. Here p is not equals to a, but a is greater than p because p is dividing a. So now we will we are assuming that. Also that is the theorem only it needs to be. Now we will multiply all possible remainders when a positive, uh, when a positive integer divided by p except 0 with a. Like this means when we are multiplying all the possible remainders, we get when a positive integer is divided by p except 0 like the possible remainders are from 0 to p minus 1 like 0 1 2 3 up to p minus 1 so here we will get that except 0 because a complete uh, p doesn't completely divide a so we will get uh, we will write it in the form of congruence equations we will get a congruent to s mod p as both uh, 2 is also remainder so 2 into a uh, congruent to 2 into x mod p both sides as is the property of modular arithmetic so like this up to p minus 1 into a congruent to p minus 1 into x mod p now we'll prove that these can be greater than p also like these again when multiplied can be greater so when we are taking pre a p common from that we should make sure that no common remainder is uh, no same remainder gives it gives out from these the equations from these congruence equations so now we will prove that uh, now we have to prove that mod p leaves different remainders in each case except 0. Will each remainder except 0? So assume that two distinct remainders multiplied with a which leaves the same remainder in each case. We'll assume two distinct remainders multiplied with a. a, in, uh, a into a, a small a, a into small b. Like these are from the 1, 2, 3, 4 up to p minus 1. Congruent to r, congruent to r, mod b. Like these uh, leave the same remainder when divided by p. So if we subtract these two, we'll get a into a minus b congruent to zero mod b. But p doesn't divide a as they are co-primes. So we'll get so a minus b congruent to zero mod b. Again, we can shift this uh, this minus b to the, uh, this side of add both this side with b. So we'll get a congruent to b mod p. But here both a and b are uh, sh uh, smaller than p as these are the remainder possible multiply to a because the, as these were the remainders they always you know the remainders are smaller than p so when a positive integer is divided by t the remainders must always be smaller than p so that is the reason why and you will get to know why this is useful in the next part so we'll meet again in the next part we again we are came, i have come back with the next part so previously if you remember that a and b were smaller than that p so that so now we'll get why the, this was that was helpful so by euclid division lemma we can write that we got a congruent to b mod p so we can write it a equals to p into k plus b where p is the divisor k is the quotient plus b a remainder a is the dividend so for some integer k a equals to p to 0 plus b because a and b were smaller than p as I previously said you. Remember? So a equals to b. We are getting that. But this contradicts our assumption in which we assume that a and b were distinct possible remainders when divided by p except 0. So we assume that it was a dif a say a different remainders. When something was divided by p, we assumed a and b were different except 0 of course. But here we are getting a equals to b. So this is contradicting our assumption and this proves that distinct remainders possible multiplied to a least distinct remainders. So whenever a into uh, a congruent to x mod p, a 2a congruent to uh, 2x mod p. So every time when we are simplifying the remainder also like 2x p minus into 1 uh, p minus 1 into x. That one also when we are simplifying further 
that time also we are getting distinct remainders so here also x 2x up to this p minus 1 into x up to p minus x mod p if you simplify again take p common from those so again we'll give it will leave the remainder of a distinct but all possible remainders of p except 0 but in some other order some in other order this means like 7 congruent to suppose 2 mod 5 so we will get uh, we will 7 into 2 con 2 is not coming here it is 14 mod 5 so it will be 4 here so 2 is not coming with 7 into 2 it is coming with 7 but 4 is coming with here so send some in other order so multiplying all these congruence equations will get these this uh, a in, uh, to the power p minus 1 into 1 into like this up to p minus 1 again up to here to here again from here because these were the remainders after simplifying so if we cancel this whole is this whole is same in the both so we can cancel out and we will get this so this is our format slim theorem and here we took p minus 1 because we have only multiplied possible remainders except 0 if you included 0 then the number would be p numbers 0 1 2 3 up to p minus 1 but we excluded 0 so there are p minus 1 numbers so we, we a was occurring p minus 1 times so it, it, it as we multiplied it went in the power so a to the power p minus 1 common to 1 mod p hence our formal theorem is proved thank you